Hey guys, it's Leo with Dreaming Tree and welcome to the Father's Day SVG Bundle Tutorials. And as you can see here, we have our three items um, all done up and ready to go for Father's Day. So I do want to talk just a little bit about all the items here. Um, so we can begin with our cute little box here. And as you can see, the nice lid comes off here. There's a little rosette on there. and it's styled after a dress shirt, as you can see here. We've got a nice little tie here um, with a um, little offset portion of the back of the tie just to make it more realistic. There is a little pocket in here that has um, a tiny little note card that you can write something in. Um, so that could take the place of a card for dad um, since this doesn't actually include any cards, uh, this bundle. but. Um, it's pretty straightforward to put together. Um, this is probably the easiest um, item in this bundle um, to put together. So um, we used mostly white cardstock, as you can see. And this pattern paper here, because it's for a guy, we decided to use some striped patterns. And believe it or not, this paper is actually from an Echo Park Christmas bundle, which um, you can actually find the link to or find more information about in the supply list section on the product page. Um, so aside from the basic construction, um, did a little bit of embellishing by putting a little um, star-shaped rhinestone here and some gold pearls. Um, just to kind of jazz it up a little bit, there's some gold pearls up there as well. And again, overall, this is a very simple box. It's a very good size. The dimensions as well um, are listed on the product page. Um, and this it, being a, a decent sized box, is going to be able to hold um, a decent sized gift. You could definitely, if you fold them properly, you could get two or three t-shirts in here probably. Um, so definitely a tie. Um, anything you could fit in this box, obviously. I don't know your father very well, but I'm sure you do, or at least I hope you do. Uh, and I'm sure that you can fit something nice in there for him. Um, so that is that, which leads us to my favorite piece here the trophy um, and this one's probably this one probably takes the most amount of time um, to put together only because we're working with a structure and then overlaying some panels on it to give it a smooth look so that it's not all rigid um, so you've got your nice little base here when i saw the design on this i thought that you know the colors that we had used are sort of put here to sort of mimic uh, a nice felt on a trophy. Um, I did see a comment, um, someone asking if we were going to possibly include some additional plaques, but actually this plaque here um, comes blank. Um, there are some little positioning um, cutouts on it to help you place the word dad accurately and precisely. You can easily remove that and um, customize this for whatever you want. Um, so it's actually a very good size as you can see here and I know for some people this may not be appropriate but me and my dad do enjoy having some drinks um, so you can easily put a gift card in here a cigar um, I went to my local um, liquor store and just picked out some shooters here just to pop in there and um, you know aside from Father's Day there are so many other possible uses for this which we'll get to here in just a moment. So aside from the basic construction, as you can see, we've also sort of embellished this with rhinestones, um, actually all rhinestones, and um, it's completely optional, but we took some silver, actually some gold string here um, that you can tie all the way behind it just to kind of give the impression that this little ribbon is hanging off of it. Um, did fill it with some crinkle fill just to kind of make it look nice inside. and. Um, and you've got yourself a really cool, one-of-a-kind, handmade gift for dad or some other occasions, like I said, which we'll discuss here in a little bit. So last but not least, oh, and before I forget, by the way, um, we wanted to give this a um, authentic look. So these panels here actually took through an embossing uh, machine with a DeReese wood grain embossing folder, which is also linked to in the supply section. So last but not least, we have this brand new paper sculpture, which is a little bit different than the paper sculptures that you saw during our initial release. 
and even some of the ones that we've released um, since that initial release. As you can say, this one is very dimensional. Um, I would say, if I recall, probably three or four layers of dimension on this. And I would actually ve venture to say that this is the easiest to put together. Uh, we've made it so that it's very easy to assemble. Um, of course, you're gonna have an assembly video that's gonna walk you through it. Positioning these pieces is very simple. I tell you exactly where to place the 3D foam squares or pop dots. I prefer the foam squares, but you can use pop dots. And um, this one definitely goes together probably the quickest. Um, so you will need a 12 by 12 shadow box, which I have seen plenty of at my local Joann's. And I was actually just at Michael's today as well. And I saw shadow boxes there as well. So we did this in um, very graphic colors to really give it a lot of light. But if you have someone with a lake house and they have specific colored decor, I know that up north in the, the north woods, um, things are very woodsy, you know? So um, you could easily do this by utilizing maybe three or four tones of a brown, or maybe even just using um, shades of white and gray. Uh, as you've seen and as I've seen with our previous shadow boxes, um, we really cannot stop your creativity and how you see this, uh, the end result when it comes to this. So um, I always look forward to seeing how yours is going to turn out. But it's a great little piece, um, very simple to put together. And I don't have the glass on this right now because I, I don't want the glare hitting it. But once you put the glass in there, you can easily... Um, do some vinyl work on there, which I have done actually in the past on a couple of the pieces that we've released, uh, just to customize it. So, so this would be a great piece for someone's lake house. Um, you can put the name of the lake house. I know when I've been up to the North Woods there, um, everyone seems to have a name for their cabin. You could do that. You can put uh, the person's last name, your last name, whoever you want to give this to, or if you're making it for yourself, um, you can really customize it in so many different ways. So I can't always see what you see when you see these projects as far as how or where you can use them. So I just want to take a minute to highlight some of the comments from the trailer that we posted on Facebook and kind of give you some insight into what our other fans see as, you know, uh, the possibilities for these projects. Our friend Ray says, so cool, I'm going to convert the trophy into a spooky Halloween goblet. Can't wait to play with this one. Uh, and actually, Ray, you know, as I was putting this together, I was thinking about my Halloween party that I throw every year and the fact that I have a, a costume part or a costume contest. And um, in past years, I've actually gone to the local trophy shop and ordered a trophy for that. And that, as you can imagine, can get sort of expensive. Um, and aside from the traditional trophy, there isn't really much else to customize except for the little cap on top, which they don't really give you too many options for. So I promise you, and I'm actually excited to convert this guy into um, a Halloween version um, cup for my next party, where I would actually, I could actually take this embossing that I have here for the wood grain um, and use like um, a spider web or something. I may try to find something that's dark and metallic for the trophy itself uh, and then dress it up with all sorts of, you know, Halloween related motifs um, and elements. So I'm looking forward to that. I see great minds think alike. Leslie O'Donnell says, could definitely use the shirt and tie box for a retirement present. So yeah, I mean, that is definitely fitting for retirement and I'm glad you mentioned that. Thank you so much, Leslie. Linda Carey Rosati says, I love all of them. You can use the trophy for dad's day. Coaches, gifts, so many options. And actually that would be a really great gift for a coach, a trophy, especially if they led the team to um, a championship or whatever, or even if they didn't, it would still be a great little gift. You can put something in it, a gift card, um, whatever it is that that coach likes, it would be a really great little keepsake for him or her. Marge Wiley says, great for first communion chalice without the handles. And that is actually another thing that, that I noticed while I was putting this together, um, because based on the order in which this is assembled, or at least the way I did it, um, I didn't put the handles on until the panels and the basic construction of the actual trophy or cup were complete. And as I was holding it, 
um, you know, being raised Catholic and, and going to a Catholic school, um, you see this image a lot. And I thought, wow, that is, that is just a perfect chalice. So um, that would act, this would actually be great for a First Communion gift. Um, I guess you could put it on a different base or keep it on the same base, um, but definitely fill it with a gift for somebody that is you know, finishing their First Holy Communion. So thank you for that comment, Marge. Our friend Becky Harrington says, I love the wall art. It would be perfect for my son's house by the lake. And that's exactly sort of, well, that's exactly the reason that we created this um, was to be a, a little, it could be a housewarming gift for someone that just bought a lake house or someone that retired, or someone that just bought, um, you know, some new property up in the Northwoods or, or whatever it may be. So I'm glad you see that as well, Becky. Thank you. Diane Vogue says, I have graduation on my mind. The box and trophy could easily be adapted for that. And I completely agree. Graduating is quite the accomplishment, and I do believe that it should deserve a, an award or a trophy. Roberta Sadler says, I would use the box to put a gift in for a dad-to-be. That's another great idea. It doesn't necessarily have to be a dad. It can just be a soon-to-be dad. So that was a wonderful idea. So as you can see, there's so many different possible ways to modify or alter or adapt this for your special occasion. So I always look forward to seeing your work, um, and I'm, I'm hoping that you do just that. And if you do, post a picture on Facebook. So without further ado, your respective assembly video will begin now. Okay, so let's get started making a really cute box for dad. Uh, we're gonna begin by putting together the base of the box here. So these, you want these two large pieces here. And while these pieces are flat, I think it's a good idea that we, that we put our panels on. So let's go ahead and do that. I'll show you exactly where all those go. Okay, so the front is going to have a long white strip that we've sort of created some really cute perforations on um, just to kind of look like it's a like a tailored shirt or like a really nice dress shirt. So this piece here that has all of the uh, little score marks on them, as you can see there, is gonna get glued down right in the center. And we do have some little markers there to help you with the placement of that. So we can go ahead and just begin gluing this piece down. You want a nice thin line of glue on this. And you just kinda use the little swirly method there. And Let's get that glued in place, just following that little, those little guides there. And also, one other thing to keep in mind is on this little strip here that we just glued down, there's also some indicators here in the center there. I think you can see them in the video. And that's gonna help us with the alignment of the tie. Okay, so we have that piece. And then what we wanna do is wanna grab our two shorter panels and those are gonna get glued, butting up right against that piece that we just glued down. And you wanna make sure that you have a nice even border going all the way around. So go ahead and get your glue on this piece here, just like that. And again, maybe just use this one as a guide to help you figure out what the best placement is to ensure that you've got that nice border. Okay, and that looks good. Let's go ahead and get that glued into place and then follow it up with this one here. Okay, and then we can go ahead and begin putting the other panels on. It's just a lot easier to construct this while it's flat. And it's gonna be really cute. Okay. Uh, another thing to keep in mind too is one of these panels, this one here, has little markers to help you align the little pocket. Okay, so you wanna kind of maybe keep that in mind as well, uh, is that you want this one on this side here. Okay, so let's move on to the larger panels on the side. 
of which we have, well, there's three panels left. There's one that's wider than the two. These are gonna go on the side. This is gonna go on the back. Okay, so this one is gonna go right here and it's gonna be nice and centered. You wanna kinda of use this panel as a, a guide as to the height or, or how high, or I guess the vertical alignment. Oops. Okay, and I don't wanna put big globs of glue on this because I don't want the paper to warp and I don't want the glue to show through. And then maybe try to get just a little bit of glue covering the outside as well. And in my case here, I'm gonna actually stand up over this just to make sure that I'm getting it nice and centered. And that looks great. Now one little thing that I've been doing is I have been using, been using the little plates from my embossing machine to kind of help apply even pressure across the panel. Okay. All right, so this one is pretty much good to go. I'm gonna go ahead and fold a little score mark there just to make sure that we have it ready to go for the next step. Now there is a tie that we're going to put on this, but I think we're gonna put the tie on after we assemble the box. I'm gonna put this half of it to the side which just leaves this piece here. And all we're gonna do is glue this panel here and this panel here, just making sure that it's centered. And what you may want to do is take this piece and just kind of lay it next to it, just to help you ensure that your vertical alignment is consistent. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and get my glue on this panel. Kind of work it around. And I'm gonna stand up again. Just to make sure that I've got a good bird's eye view of what I'm doing here. Pop that down, I'm gonna grab my plate and push down with that. It really helps apply more pressure to a larger area. Okay, that's good. All right, and let's finish it up with this last panel here. Go ahead and get my glue on there. And after testing all sorts of glues and all sorts of bottles, I always end up going back to the Scotch Tacky. Tacky glue, I just love the flow that it gives me from the bottle. Um, the bottles actually, some bottles are really thick and you have to squeeze hard to get stuff, to get the glue out. And this has been the most consistent glue for me, so I'm gonna stick with it. Sometimes it's hard to actually source at Joanne. They, they tend to be out of stock quite often. Okay, so let's go ahead and put the box together here. And we wanna also go ahead and fold everything on this piece just to kind of get it ready to go. It's always a little bit harder to do the folding when things are attached. So I'm gonna flip this over and I'm just gonna make sure that I have everything nicely aligned here. Okay, if you want to use your little ruler, if you have a little mat with a ruler, you can use that to further help your alignment. But I'm just kind of looking at the little score marks there, just making sure that the top is nice and flush there. Okay, and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put some, I'm gonna put a nice line of glue there. Okay, and my bottle is not cooperating. Oh, there it goes. And then I'm gonna get a little bit of glue out to the edge. <clears throat> and then as usual, go ahead and work that glue out to the edge. Just to make sure that we get a nice clean seam. Okay, just like that. Just make sure that top is nice and aligned. You can flip that tab over and just push down. Make sure 
it's got a good hold before we move on. Okay, and then while this is still flat, we we'll go ahead and fold it over onto itself. And we're gonna put glue on this tab and simply glue it down like that. So that is how you get a nice, perfect fit. You wanna use your table as much as possible and get that glue out to the edge so everything looks nice and perfect and seamless. Okay, so let's tuck that under, push it down. Just make sure that that bottom is nice and aligned. And I had a little bit of glue come out there. That's okay. Just scrape that off so it doesn't get on any of the other projects. Okay, so there we go. We have our base. You may wanna give it a few extra seconds to dry before you start playing with it. Okay, but there is our box. Okay, then what we wanna do is we wanna, we gotta put the bottom on it. We've got two pieces that look like this. One of them, if you look closely, has a little B on it, okay? And that is for the bottom, but that's the liner. That's gonna go inside. This piece here is actually for the bottom, okay? And what I like to do is I will begin by just putting glue on one tab just to kind of get things moving for us, get things anchored, so to speak. As long as we get that first tab in place, everything else should work nicely and fit perfectly. So I'm gonna go ahead and pop that right on there. Just kind of grab it with both hands like this. Use your thumbs to push and align it. Add pressure so that you get a lot of surface area adhering to the glue that we just put down. And then you can always flip it over like this and push down from the inside to really get it to stick, okay? So we've got that in place, and all that's left to do at this point is put glue on the remaining three tabs and pop this thing closed. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that, and then we can move on to the next step. And just remember, maybe just start with a little line of glue in the center of the tab and then a nice thin line on the outside that you can smear out to the edge to make this thing look really nice and seamless. Okay. If you have um, something else that you want to use to get that glue out to the edge, by all means, you know, whatever, whatever um, you want to do, it's totally fine. I just like using my finger. I feel like I have more control. Okay, and then we're just going to Close it, just run your finger along the edge. Just make sure that you're getting a nice, get nice contact with that paper. Okay, so let's go ahead and embellish the front of this. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this piece, it's just the solid piece, there's no little tabs on it. And we are going to glue this so that the tip of the little tie is just kind of off center a little bit. You want it just slightly to the right of the little score marks. Okay, we're gonna glue that down right there. So go ahead and put some glue on your tie. Make sure you get that glue out to the, um, at least the top. Okay, and it's gonna be flush at the top and then just slightly off to the left of the center there, just to make sure that it's just slightly off center. Okay, so kind of like that. That looks good. Now before we, um, before we put the rest of the tie on, let's just put our little pocket on. Pocket is made up of this piece here, and it's got three little tabs. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna put glue on those tabs and then we're going to adhere it to the box there. And I wanna take and I wanna fold these tabs back and forth a few times so they sit as flat as possible. Okay, so I'm just gonna do that a few times. And then I'm gonna go ahead and let me clean off this tip here real quick. It's getting a little out of control. I'm just gonna put a little bit of glue 
on these tabs. Okay, just like that. And again, we have some guides here on the bottom of the, um, for the bottom of the little pocket. And that's just gonna help you with the alignment of that. Okay, so I just wanna push down and maybe get your hand in there to help push up. And you're gonna need to hold that in place for a few seconds while it gets a good grip. Okay, so that's kind of what that pocket's gonna look like. I'm gonna push this down, put this down face down on my table and just push down even more just to ensure that it holds. Okay, that should do it. There's our cute little pocket. And we have a little trim piece for the pocket that is just gonna get glued right to the top of that. It can go flush with the top of the pocket. It is gonna hang off just a tad, which is fine. So we can just go ahead and put a little bit of glue. This bottle's starting to get low, just like that. And you can go ahead and just pop that down. And then just make sure that you have it nice and centered. And pretty much flush with the top of that. You can push up from the inside, down from the outside. Okay, so there's your little pocket. Really cute. And then we may as well just kind of put together the little little card that goes in there. You can write a little tiny little note in there. Okay, and that is just made up of these three pieces here. We have a little hole there um, for a little string. Okay, so you can kind of tie a little string in there. We'll go ahead and just put a little bit of glue on this piece. It's like a really different gold foil that we found, I think, at Michael's. So we'll pop that on there. I'm gonna push down on my table to get it to really stick. Okay, so you want it to look like that. We have a little heart that we're also gonna glue onto the front of that. And I put way too much glue on that. That will definitely smear out if I would have left it like that. So clean that up. Once you do this enough, you have a pretty good idea of when things are gonna smear if you have too much glue. Okay, so there we go. There we go. Okay, and then you can take a little piece of a uh, little piece of string. Okay, and I'm gonna double it up like that. And I am going to feed it through the back. Let's see if we can get this out of there. Oops. Let's get that back in place. I never was good at threading needles. Might have to twist a little bit. There we go. Okay, so we've got a little loop going through it like that. And then we can feed this through like that. And where'd it go? There it is. There we go, just like that. Okay, I have a stray little piece there that is a little unsightly. Let's see if I can just rip that off or... There we go. Okay, so that is gonna go in the pocket. And actually, we will need to just kind of tie this off at the top that give it about yay yay high and trim that off okay we can go ahead like I said you can write your little note in there and then you can pop that right into the pocket I think it's kind of cute if it's sticking out a little bit at an angle just like that okay and we can go ahead and put together the rest of our little tie here. And with this tie, the idea is to give this tie some dimension, <clears throat> okay? So this is gonna get glued on 
to, or glued together like this. That's what's actually going to get glued on. But what I want to do is kind of bow this out a little bit, kind of give it a little bit of dimension. So you could probably accomplish that by just bending it at the tabs. Okay, I guess it all depends on how much you want to bend it out. It may help to get like a thick dowel, like a really thick Sharpie, and just kind of use that to kind of wrap this, uh, wrap this piece around so that you don't crease it. Okay, but I think that looks pretty good. You can see the angle on that. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go ahead and get this glued together. I'm just gonna put a little bit of glue on this long tab here, get a little bit more out to the edge. Okay. And just push and glue that down, just make sure it's nice and aligned. I did actually ink this piece because this is a white core paper and I didn't like how the score lines looked. So I just added a little bit of ink along the sides and it kind of made the um, made the score marks pretty much disappear. Okay, so we can go ahead and grab our tie and we are going to glue that down so that the point of the tie is nice and centered with the bottom here. Okay, so you can go ahead and put glue on the back of this. Make sure that you get enough so that it holds. Just like that. That's good. All right, and let's make sure that that's flush at the top and nice and centered there. And you could probably, once you have it partially down, I would say that despite the fact that this is trained, I think it's still okay to flip it over and push down from the inside to really make it stick. Okay, so let's just do that. All right, so that is looking super cute. All right, now there is, uh, let me grab my pick-me-up tool. Uh, the ones, our little, uh, our little giveaway on the pick-me-ups, those were mailed out a few days ago, so chime in if you received your pick-me-up recently. And everyone's always asking, where do I get my pick-me-up? And um, I bought them in bulk a long time ago, but you can get them pretty much anywhere. So this little star here, there's a little cutout on the front of the tie that kind of shows you where to position the star. So you can go ahead and just follow the little guides there and just push down and get that star in place. You might have to push down uh, for a few seconds there to really get it to adhere. Okay, and kind of scooch it around until it covers up those little guides. You shouldn't be showing through. Okay, so there's your little star. Okay, so we have this piece on here. And before I glued it on, I kind of wrapped it around the dowel a little bit just to kind of give it that curve so it would sit um, just nicely. Okay, so um, we are literally complete with the bottom half of this box. Okay, so I'm going to put that off to the side and we can go ahead and assemble the top part of our box. Let me get all this stuff out of the way here. All right, so let's put, let's form the lid first. Okay, and the lid is made up of these pieces here. So as always, let me get this out of here before we have a crap disaster. I'm gonna fold everything at the score marks here. Okay. And get that folded, we'll get it together. And then it's gonna go together fairly quickly. So just like we did with the box, I'm going to go ahead and lay these pieces right next to each other and begin by just putting glue on this tab here. And I'm going to work that glue out to the edge. Make sure that that's nice and covered up to the edge. Get this nice and aligned. Make sure that we have it nice and vertically aligned here. We want this line to 
look right. We can push that down. And while it's still trying to get its initial hold, I can go ahead and flip it onto itself and kind of run my finger along the top of this to make sure that I have it perfectly lined up. I'm going to go ahead and add more pressure here to where I had my glue. And that looks good. This line here and this line here are perfect. Okay, and then we can go ahead and put glue on this tab here and close this bad boy up. Get that glue out there. Okay, and then push that in. And while it's flat, just push it down. Get it nice and aligned. Add my pressure there. Let that set. Okay, so that's pretty good. All right, and so now we can put our lid on. Um, so just remember here that we have <clears throat> now I just realized that I have three pieces that look very similar. But that's because I failed to tell you to glue this little piece that has a B on it to the inside of your box. And there's a liner just to kind of strengthen and reinforce it so you can glue that in there. But let's get back to the lid here. Okay, so we have one that has a letter T right in the middle of it. This is the liner piece. And no, I'm sorry, it's not the liner piece. The one with the T is for the top. The one with the TL is the top liner, okay? So just like we did with the bottom of our box, I'm gonna go ahead and put glue on just one tab, get a little bit of glue out to the edge so that I can work that glue out to the edge so it's nice and seamless. And I'm going to focus on trying to get this nice and centered right on there. Okay, and I can flip it down on my table and push down like that. That's good. That looks great. Okay, and then we can go ahead and close this up. So, nice line right in the middle, and then a nice thin line out to the edge. Okay. And again, working that glue out to the very edge to get it nice and seamless. Okay, flip the tabs up a little bit so as you're pushing down, it grabs more of that surface area of the paper and just holds nicely for you. Okay, and then just use your fingers to work your way along the edge, just making sure everything is nicely aligned. And then you can flip it over and push down from the inside. Okay. And that looks nice and crisp. Okay, so again, we have a liner piece that we can put right on the inside. And usually I just put a little tiny bit of glue along the perimeter so it doesn't warp the inner part of the paper. Okay, and just pop that right in. It's going to stir it up for us. Okay. And at this point, what we can go ahead and do, and we do have, um, we've got some pieces here to kind of continue the aesthetic of a nice shirt, okay? And these are just little panel pieces that are gonna go on the side. You'll notice that you have the little perforated lines here. You want those towards the bottom of the lid, okay? So um, this, is gonna, this is technically the back. So I'm gonna go ahead and put glue on this and pick a side, pick a long side, it doesn't matter. Just make sure that that perforated line is facing downward 
and use your finger up at the top just to make sure that it's nice and flush at the top. You can put it down on your table then and push down from the inside to get that to stick nicely. Okay, and we have two sides, same thing. You wanna keep those perforated lines at the bottom. Okay, so we'll go ahead and put glue on this piece here. And pick a side, pick a side, any side. Make sure that those perforated lines are at the bottom. Make sure that it's nice and flush with the top. And then you can put it down on your table and push down, get that in place. Okay, and then finish it up with the last side. And then we can work on the front of the lid. Okay, and again, score marks facing the opening of the box there. Or the box lid, I should say. And we do have a panel that's gonna go right on top here, like so. So we can go ahead and get that glued into place for now. It's a really cute box just for dad. Uh, I think it's probably big enough to even fit a t-shirt. If you wanna get him like a cool sports shirt or something, we'll definitely fit that in there. Okay, so just make sure that you get that nice and centered. Okay. All right, and then let's work on the front here. And this gold piece is gonna go right on the front. So let's go ahead and get that glued down. Glue that right to the front there. Push down, make sure that gets a good grip. Okay, and if you have some little edges that you weren't able to glue down perfectly, grab your handy little spatula, and I have one just dedicated for doing stuff like this, so that I can just take my spatula, dip it in a little bit of glue, and kind of peel back the part that I wasn't able to glue down perfectly. Just to kind of squeeze some glue in there. And then I just push and hold that down until it really stays. And that's just gonna give me a, a very nice polished look because it looks like I had a few issues with some of the edges here. So I definitely wanna clean that up just to make it look as nice as I can. There we go, just push and hold that in place. And it makes a world of difference. If you have little, little seams sticking out, it just doesn't look as polished. Okay, all right, so that's that. And then we're gonna go ahead and put this black piece right in the center of this piece here, actually. You can actually align that to the top. My apologies. So put glue on the back of this. And again, try to try to get that glue out to the edge. Okay. And we're just gonna align that to the top. We just want a little nice little like just a little bit of gold showing through here at the bottom. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna put the little collar piece on, okay? And that's gonna go on like so. So what we wanna do is, I'm gonna go ahead and, so again, it's gonna go on like this. So you don't wanna put glue beyond this point here. So you see this little score mark here? Just kinda keep it above that score mark when you're putting your glue down. OK. 
Okay. And we'll get that little piece right on there. Make sure it's nice and flush with the top. Just kind of squeeze that on. Just like that. Okay, grab our other collar piece. It's going to go like this. And the same rule applies when you're, when you're putting your glue on. Just kind of keep it above, above that, that score mark right there. And then that way you won't, it won't be messy when you go to get this glued in place. Okay. Make sure that it's nice and flush with the top flush with the side, and I'm going to go ahead and put this down on my surface here and apply pressure that way. Okay, so that is roughly what it should look like. Okay, and then we can go ahead and put the last little piece of the tie on here. Okay, so it's this piece here. I am going to go ahead and take my dowel and sort of wrap it around this dowel very gently to kind of give it a little bit of dimension. Okay, just like that. And then we can go ahead and put a little bit of glue on this tab here. And close that up. Okay. And then we are gonna glue that flush to the top of that part here. So we've got this little area for our glue. We can go ahead and spread that out a little bit. And just get that glued flush to the top of there. It should just fit like a little puzzle piece. Okay. There we go. So let's take a look at what we have so far. Okay, so there's our, our cute little box with the little tie. Okay, and then all that's left to do is put our little rosette up on top. Okay, and what we're gonna do is we have this piece here and we have some overlay letters here. So I'm gonna use my my pick-me-up tool to grab this and just dip little parts of it in the glue here and there. You don't really need to get it everywhere. And then sometimes I'll just dab it if I feel like I got a little too much glue in some spots. Just dab it to get it off so it doesn't smear. And that actually kind of helps just running it like that. Okay, and that is going to cover that gold part perfectly. So let's position that as nicely as possible. Just like that. Okay, so there's our D. And actually, you know what? This piece is probably big enough to where I could probably just use my little dot method. Yeah, that's actually easier than using the pick-me-up tool. I guess I sort of misgaged the size of these letters. Okay, so just line that A up with the top of that A in the gold. Just push that down. If you get a little glue that smears out, just wipe it off before it gets a chance to dry. And pop our rosette on there, and we are pretty much good to go here with our box for dad. I am probably going to put a t-shirt in this or something and maybe a gift card and call it a day. Okay, so there is our little caption. All right, let's grab our rosette. Okay. Now in my case, I want this pattern sticking out. OK, 
Okay, so I'm just gonna go ahead and fold this back and forth. If you want, you can kind of do this method on your table. If you don't want to bend it, this kind of helps keep everything nice and straight. Sometimes if you try to do that, it might kind of crease the paper and make it a little unsightly, which we don't want. So we're just kind of going back and forth like this to form the rosette. So you see how that's looking. Okay, so we're almost done here forming our rosette. Okay, and this, this long piece here is what's gonna help it kind of stay together. We're gonna glue it to itself like that. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna put glue. And you may wanna use hot glue for this. I'm just gonna be patient with my glue, so I will get away with this. But typically with rosettes, because of all the tension, you may just want to you may just want to um, use hot glue. And I'm going to put this flat on my table right here. Make sure that it's nice and lined up, and just really hold that in place while it dries. It's really fighting itself. But that's okay. All right, so there is our rosette. And we do have a, a little backing piece, which we're gonna put right on there. Okay, and actually what we can do, we can take it a step further and you can put glue on this part here. And kind of just glue it to these Glue it to these bottom two as well. Just to make it more sturdy. It should hold better. There we go. Okay. And then I'm gonna go ahead and just dress the these this intersection here with a good amount of glue. Take this piece and get it nice and flush with the bottom there. Make sure you have it nice and centered. You can actually put it down on your table just to make sure that everything is nice and flush. Okay, I'm just doing the back first. I'm gonna actually glue this in place, making sure that it's stable. And then I will put the front on because that's really gonna be what everyone's gonna be looking at. Okay, so once you have your rosette all done and glued, you may wanna kind of bend it out, like try to form a full circle with it as far as the bend goes, not in, but out, so that when you release it, it stays pretty much nice and flat there. Okay, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and put glue on the bottom of this thing here. Get it nice and smeared out. And then I'm gonna go ahead and get that nice and centered on my box, on the lid, I should say. So get that nice and centered while it dries. Okay, and then once we put the little finishing touch on it, it'll hold everything in place so it doesn't give the illusion that it's like falling backwards. Okay, so we can go ahead and put our little dad on here. And I'm actually gonna hot glue that down so I don't have that out right now, but you're gonna to wanna to hot glue that down. Um, so just put glue on the back of this and get that glued into place, okay? And then there's a piece for the back as well that you're gonna put on as well. But aside from that, that's pretty much it for this project. So, so I hope you guys had just as much fun putting these together as my team and I did bringing it to you. And if you do make one of these projects, I'd love to see your version. So be sure to post a picture, uh, whether it be on our Facebook wall or in our brand new Facebook group on Facebook, on your blog, Instagram, Twitter, Pinterest, wherever it might be, definitely drop me a line and let me know that you've made it because I'd love to add your version to our Dreamers Gallery. 
So thank you so much again for joining me and I look forward to crafting with you again. Stay on top of all things Dreaming Tree and engage with us today. Get the latest news and enter in our giveaways on Facebook. Get inspired by following us on Pinterest. Be the first to see our new product launches on Instagram. Do you prefer Twitter? Yep, we're there too. Watch our beautiful product trailers and assembly tutorials on YouTube. For more information, visit www.3dsvg.com. Live, craft, love, and dream.